G'day guys, I'm Dr. Simcock here and I'm just going to do a short video for our YouTube members. Um, we have here a seven month old female entire uh, bauble who is uh, about 40 kilos and is coming to see us for a pelvic limb lameness. Um, actually for a right pelvic limb lameness but we are looking at the left back leg here. Um, both legs have a medial patelluxation and what I wanted to show you was just a little bit about how um, we do our assessment for patelluxation, just kind of point out a couple of things for you. So generally I find the best way to assess for medial patelluxation is to have um, the patient anesthetized, especially in dogs where it can be very hard to feel the patella or if they're kind of a bit stressed or a bit anxious and they're very tense in the leg. Having them under sedation or under general anesthetic just makes all the muscles totally relaxed. If it is a nice calm dog, you can do the same examination. Um, but I find it easy to do this while they're in lateral recumbency because there's no tension in the quadriceps um, apparatus at all. So what we're doing, um, we can feel the, the patella here and you can probably actually see me palpating this um, patella and pushing it in and out. So we're doing this, we can diagnose the patella luxation by um, just pushing the patella out. We can then determine the direction. So this is a medial patella luxation. And then the other thing I'm wanting to determine is the grade of um, the luxation. So this dog actually, um, is technically a grade one luxation in that the patella is staying in pretty much all the time. I can't actually get it to luxate. Even when I'm internally rotating the tibia and flexing and extending, I can't get that patella to move until I actually put some pressure on it. So once it's luxated out there, it does want to move in and out. Now, um, the grading system for me, I don't necessarily put a lot of weight on the specific number of the grade. It's more to give me an idea, you know, is it at the low end of the spectrum or the high end of the spectrum? So just to review that grading system, grade one is when the patella is in most of the time, we can force it out, um, but it wants to spontaneously reduce. The grade two luxation is where it does spontaneously luxate, but again, it wants to stay in most of the time. A grade three luxation is when the patella is out all the time, um, but we can reduce it back in. And then a grade four luxation is when the patella is out all the time and we can't actually get it to go back in. Um, so with this dog and when we're assessing these guys, first thing is we want to palpate the patella. We can see the direction and then we want to comment on the grade. I know that this dog actually has a grade two at least because um, when I was looking at him awake, he has a spontaneous luxation. So what I'm looking for here is just through range of motion, um, when does the patella want to come out and in? So when I extend the leg, that's when I can get it out very easily. When I flex the knee, I can't actually get that patella to move very much. Um, and I think that's an important thing when we're assessing how to correct this, especially if we're looking at a tibial crest transposition. And I'll show you some of the x-rays we've taken in a second. The other thing that I think is important to recognize is that the knee has an amount of internal rotation um, that we can induce by kind of manipulating the foot here. And if we internally rotate the foot, we can internally rotate the attachment point of the patella, which is down here. And so. Generally, I want to keep the leg in a fairly neutral position, see what the patella is doing. And if I'm trying to exacerbate the luxation, so I just did it there, we can actually internally rotate the leg and we can get that patella to come out. So internally rotating the leg there, you can actually see that the patella is spontaneously wanting to go in and out with that movement. So all those things are important to kind of recognize. As part of the workup for this guy, we have actually just done a CT scan as well. Um, what I'm wanting to look for is femoral varus um, and femoral torsion. And then when we actually look at our x-rays and imagine if we're just planning to do a tibial crest transposition, what I want to look at on the x-rays is a, um, especially an extended lateral view. So we look at um, just a regular lateral view and a 90-90 flexed position. And we can see that we've actually got a bit of a fusion here, but we can see relatively where that patella is sitting in relation to the trochlear groove. It's sitting kind of in the middle there. What I'm interested in though, if I'm doing a tibial crest transposition is not only how far medial or lateral do I need to translate it, it's also whether I need to distalize that um, tibial crest to actually bring the patella down um, into the, the trochlear groove more effectively. And in this dog, um, we can see here with an extended view, um, and this is full extension, so we can see that that's you know, 140, 130 degrees or something like that of extension. That patella is still wanting to sit within the, within the trochlea. In some cases, if they have a condition called patella alta, where the patella is sitting more up here, that patella will actually come out and sit um, outside of the trochlea groove. And in those cases, we think about doing our tibial crest transposition and, and medialising it, um, or lateralising it as needed, and then distalising that um, tibial crest section. Just for this dog specifically, um, at seven months of age, <clears throat> she is not one where I'd want to do a tibial crest transposition just yet um, because we have got um, 
and sorry, uh, the tibial apophysis hasn't actually fused onto the, the tibia here. So I'd be worried about doing a tibial crest transposition through this location and creating a weak spot. The other thing that's interesting in this dog is that we have got a reasonable amount of effusion in here. And so whenever we do this surgery, we're going to want to have a good look at the cranial cruciate ligament and make sure there's no other concerns there. The final comment I'd make is that this dog doesn't have an excessive amount of femoral varus at this stage. The um, lateral um, femoral varus angle is, um, so the lateral, anatomic lateral femoral angle is about 99 degrees on both sides. Um, interestingly, this dog has an antiversion angle of zero, which is too low. And so generally you want an antiversion angle of about 15 degrees. So I'm gonna have a conversation with the owners about um, options for management of this case. Um, my recommendation is most likely going to be to manage conservatively for another couple of months till we can get this growth plate closed and that's going to give us an opportunity then to um, scope the joint, assess the cranial cruciate ligament. My first step I think in this case would be to correct the tibial crest um, or to correct the patelluxation with the tibial crest transposition assuming the cruciate's normal. If there was any further issues we might do a femoral um, osteotomy and, and correct the antiversion angle. So that is the case for the day. Hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you all soon.